another key characteristic of adult education suggested by Malcolm Knowles is that of experience. Now, it's believed that as a person matures, they accumulate a history and a foundation of life experiences, of knowledge. Now, these can be good or they could be bad. And that obviously affects the way that we need to design our learning products and programs. Now, their previous experiences could obviously include a whole range of things. It could be work related activities. It could be family responsibilities. It could be their previous education and experiences that they've had in the classroom and outside the classroom as well. So as edu edupreneurs, this can be a good thing. It can really be a fantastic resource that we can actually tap into to make our training even better. If we can draw upon those experiences, if we can contextualize by using the language that they understand and they can apply to their personal life, it can make our learning far more impactful to our learners. However, within the same breath, obviously not all of our previous experiences in our lives are necessarily good ones. So they can also bring us challenges as edupreneurs, as trainers and educators. So we need to really be aware of how experience plays a part in your learning products and programs. This is really important when it comes to the design phase. So as we're building our courses, we, we basically must be aware of the influence that past experiences can have. So not just on our learners' perceptions of the education, um, and their preconceived notions of, of what your program is actually going to be about. But it also plays a, a part in the expectations that they're going to have from your course. So again, we want to make sure that from the outset, as we're designing this course and as we're pulling it together, that we're making sure those expectations are correct, that we're making sure their preconceptions um, are in the right place and are in reality to what we're actually going to bring them. And we're going to obviously we go through the rest of this course. We're going to look at what some of those things we can do actually are. I just want to give you a bit more of experience before I explain how we're going to actually make sure that we include this experience element in, uh, into our training by talking about the difference between adults and children here. But because children have very little previous experience to influence their thoughts, to influence their feelings and reactions to new information, it basically means that in schools, we, we have a form of learning or teaching that's called very a didactic type of method. This means that basically the teacher stands at the front and tells them what they need to know and that's it. Whereas in adult learning, we need to very much more include the learners. We cannot be didactic. We can't just say this is how it is and that's it. We must constantly be bringing in relevance and allowing those learners, those adult learners, to draw upon their past experiences and importantly to express their progressive learning through their own understanding of its application to their lives. So I guess the best way to think about this is, you know, how, how you're in a, a training session as an adult and you can ask questions and ask how that would apply to your business, how that would apply to your life. People speak up and say, so for me, what this means is, that's a classic, very simple example of how people start actually synthesizing what they're learning and applying it to their own experience. I'd like to give you another extreme example, just to make my point here. Um, I've been an adult educator now for more than 10 years. And one of the places that I started teaching was actually in prisons and in welfare to work environments or with groups with very low education attainment. Now, in those um, particular settings, I found a very, very obvious disconnection between the learners and the courses that they were enrolled in because their previous experience of formal learning had often been very painful and humiliating memories. You know, their, their memories were of boredom, and in particular, their memories were of failure. Now, based on those experiences, what that meant for me as an adult educator was that as adults, they were coming into my classroom having already decided that learning was not for them, that they were incapable of education, that they couldn't do it, and um, that this was just going to be a great big waste of time. So obviously, that meant I had to approach the learning in a very different way. 
Um, it will be exactly the same for you guys in your classrooms as well. Now, of course, it, this isn't just restricted to marginalised group of, groups of learners. That, like I said, that was an extreme example. Now, I myself at school used to be absolutely appalling at math. And in fact, I, I actually still am. And my teacher at school was, was less than helpful and often used me as the example to everybody else of how not to do math. So um, because of that experience, which obviously wasn't a very nice one, to this day, I still absolutely hate math. I literally abhor it. And even doing my finances for my business today sends me into a, an absolute anxious and irritable frenzy of just completely irrational negative behavior. I get extremely stressed out by it. So. You can see here how this can reflect on our future the way that we preconceive and we go into certain kinds of environments. As adults, we avoid learning things that we fear. So by acknowledging our learners' experiences, by making room for it in our courses, we can massively increase the learning experience for them. So that's enough of me going on. Let's have a look at actually what we can do to make sure this is happening in our classrooms. So we need to be making sure that, they, that we're constantly drawing upon those learning experiences. Now, the first thing we need to do is make sure that our training is contextualized. What does this mean? Well, the word context quite literally means place. It means environment. What place or environment do your learners sit within? So we don't literally mean the classroom. We mean what learning that are you providing that applies to the context, the place, the environment that they personally belong in. So when you are talking about, I don't know, for instance, if you teach Facebook marketing, for instance, um, what we want to be doing here is looking at who your audience actually are, going back to this age old point of understanding our customer avatar, who's taking our course. Are they small business owners? Are they corporate companies? Are they, um, I don't know, solopreneurs? Are they stay at home mums? We need to understand who would be taking that course in Facebook marketing so that the language we use in that course is you know how you want to learn Facebook marketing for your small business. When you are creating, you know, when you're doing this ad you need to make sure that you're constantly referring to their particular circumstance. Again, using language that they're familiar with. So understanding not only what their existing skills and knowledge is, um, you also need to be making sure that you are using that contextualized language that is relevant to their industry, that's relevant to the sector that they belong in so that they feel like this has been built especially for them, that it's relevant for them and then it draws upon all of the learning they've already done. We need to be using case scenarios and examples they can relate to. Same thing again. So when you're giving examples, when you're trying to explain something, try to use those examples that are specifically relevant to them, their lives, their business, their social roles, their jobs, um, whatever it is that they, your customer belongs to. Always refer to their particular past life, work and social experiences and um, talk about their own learning as well. So here we, I just want to bring in the concept of um, experiential learning cycle. Now this was created originally by somebody called David Kolb. Um, and you can see here from this example, lots of people have, have then built upon this example. Now experiential learning in the adult education world has been a really key concept of understanding how an adult learns and the, the way in which an adult takes on the most impactful learning experiences. Now, just to sum this up very briefly, this is how we can work it in your classroom. Here we have an experience. Something actually happens to them in the classroom. They learn something in the classroom and they then question and reflect on what they actually learned there, whether it was useful, whether it was interesting or impactful. They ask why they start thinking about um, how does that apply to my life? Um, did I learn something that was worth learning? And therefore, what am I going to do to actually implement that into my life to make myself and my life better? So if you can, when you're designing your learning program, constantly be explaining in advance each of these steps. So today we are going to, for instance, today we are going to learn X, Y and Z. And we are going to learn this because 
it will enable this um, particular situation or competency or skill to take place, which will help your life in this particular way. Then at the end of the class, you say, you know, what did you learn? Do you feel that's going to help you? You're, you're just creating an even better opportunity for that experience to actually take place. So that is in a nutshell, the concept of experience in our classroom. So make sure that the design of your learning program allows for not only the previous experience of your learners, but that the actual process of learning and teaching itself creates new experiences for your learners in relation to a personal interest and life relevant area for your learners.